This week we're back at Talladega, and the Super Speedway package is still in effect, so cars will be going 250 miles per hour again. We returned to Talladega after the death of Bob Graham, who died in the race last year, as he violently rolled in the catch fence. And in response to this, one team, Australian Motorsports, has decided not to show up for this event. They have the 18, the 19, and the 58, and they were reported as saying that until the series decides to change the Super Speedway package to something a bit more uh, safe, I guess you could say, they're not going to show up for any Super Speedway events. So this may actually ha this actually may hurt them more than it helps them, because in practice, we were actually pretty clean and nobody was wrecking. Starting on the pole this week is Ryan Jeffries in the number 91 for Johnson Racing. He was one of the three cars that got bumped into a locked-in position because Australian Motorsports decided not to show up, and he made the most of it by getting the pole here as he pulls out to a pretty decent lead over Gaspar D'Souza and Joe Craig, two of which are teammates at Raptor Racing, and they've been really strong all week. They've been top of the practice charts and in qualifying as well, running two and three right now. Also up there is Craig Yonser who is a team card of that number 91, and he's having a career week this week. He's qualified fourth. Here is John Kirkpatrick. Unsurprisingly, he's lost the draft already, and he's running in last, and you can just barely see the pack there. This is the end of lap one, and here is a debutante driver this week. We've got Daniel Sharp in the number 01, Rents Brown Muzzle Foundation, Lola. I believe they also have uh, Steve Ray to school a fuck on that car. So they're running at about 31st right now and slowly making their way up through the pack. This is a Speedway car, and it's just kind of hanging in there near the back of the pack. Gaspar D'Souza, as I mentioned before, is having an awesome week. He's been top of the practice charts all week, and right now he's leading... Uh, David Hetzel, Ramsey Cockner, and I believe that's Barry Juvenal back there. As you saw a car pull off, that is your pole sitter, Ryan Jeffries, pulling off into the pits on lap four. He reported a tire going down on that car. Tough break for him. He's going to have to try and fight back and try to get back in the top 30 because he's in 32nd in owner's points right now. And a uh, tough run like this won't do him any good. As you see there, the leaders are putting him a lap down. Joe Craig is running in second place right behind Gaspar D'Souza. Those two are team cars, and they've always been traditionally strong on these super speedways. Even back last year with Joe Craig and I believe that was Jean-Francois de Villa in these cars were leading at Daytona and Talladega early on last season before Davila got swept up in that uh, zombie apocalypse a few uh, months ago. A driver having an awesome run this week is Lenny Jacobs, who's running up in second place and actually pushing Joe Craig away from the rest of the pack. Lenny Jacobs has been fairly strong in qualifying for the past few weeks, but mechanical issues have constantly taken him out of a decent position of finishing. But it looks like that all has turned around this week as he's running up front on lap 10. Chris Winter and Andrew Tamarzan have already lost the draft back in the pack. They're trying to hang on desperately, but their cars just aren't really geared for super speedways since we only go to a few of them, and the schedule seems to be mostly comprised of road courses this year, so they're uh, kind of more geared towards road courses this year. And here is Craig Yonser, who I mentioned before is having a career day. He's running in second place right now on lap 11, and he has been up front all race long. He looks to be really strong here today, and he was really fast in practice as well. Here we're going to go on board with John Kirkpatrick, who is about to go a lap down on lap, uh, on lap 12. As you see here, the leaders just kind of dart around him as he holds up Gaspar D'Souza there on the outside line, as, as well as uh, Lenny Jacobs and Craig Yonser and a couple other people there. As they go, it looks like they went four wide back there with Tommy Urban and a couple other people, but they sorted that out really fast. So, seems to be racing really clean here. And here's Ian Elias, who last week he took the championship lead and promptly threw that away in the first turn at Road America. So he's trying to redeem that by running up front in second place with his teammate Brian Gallagher there on the bottom, although he decides to ditch him and go for the lead himself. Looks like there's no team orders at Paloma Autosport this year. And uh, Gallagher moves up to second place as Ian Elliott starts to fall back a bit, but he's been hanging up there with the lead group. Here is Barton Sandy, who has also lost the draft by lap 15, as well as John Jefferson, who's just a little bit behind him at this point. And uh, he's just trying to hang on for dear life to the pack, but 
to no avail, really. A few of the underdogs this week have actually had really good runs. Here we're looking at Bobby Dollar, who's running near the top 10. And back there, you can see Damon Jones hanging on to the lead pack. And behind the lead pack, it's gone mostly single file. But there's still quite a few people up here who we haven't really seen a lot of. Uh, Gabriella Apollo there on the right hand side of the screen is one of those as well and she just barely squeaked her way into the main qualifier it required the disqualification of Trey McKay to get her in. Trey McKay won the qualifying race but he was disqualified due to um, rocket boosters being found on that car and here we're looking at Chris Benson who has taken the lead here on lap 24 and he is looking very strong this week. Tom Delgado has fallen back a bit and he is basically lost the main pack. I'm not sure if this is some kind of strategy of his or if he legitimately lost it, but you can see there that Kelly Blackwater in the 35 in that Golden Corral machine has actually lost it as well. So kids don't look to be eating free this week. Here we're looking at Flint Stoneman, Delgado's teammate, and he's running four wide right now, and he's trying to work his way up through the pack and try to get up there and challenge for the lead at some point. Stoneman's year has been abysmal. He's not qualified for many races, and this is the first time he's qualified that Acura. As you see them running three and four wide back in the pack there, trying to get through, and Flint Stoneman is just trying to drive towards the front and pull off an upset here today. Here we're looking on board Daniel Sharp, and he has lost the main pack as well. You see a car up there, I believe that is Daniel Lecklider in the distance and he's also losing the main pack as well so a couple cars uh, actually quite a few cars here today aren't really geared for the main pack so they're just kind of hanging back either that or well as I said before their cars just aren't doing anything Chester Benson as you saw in the previous shot is diving onto pit road here he is he is going to lose two laps in the pits tough break for him here is John Kirkpatrick who just went two laps down on lap 28 and uh, at least he's being somewhat courteous as a backmarker, taking the high line there, as he lets everyone by without much of a problem, even though it looks like they're going four wide there. Oh, I hope that's not a wreck, but I think they'll be able to hold... Yes, they did. Pete Maverick makes an excellent avoidance to the apron, but somehow they hold it together, and he goes a lap down without much of an issue. Damon Jones here running in third place. He's going to take second from Dave Hetzel and try to make a challenge here on Chris Benson for the lead, but Damon Jones has been qualifying off and on for these races. He is what I'd like to call a super speedway ace, as he's been at the front for the majority of the super speedway races this year, which have uh, typically been wreck fests, but still, before the wrecks, he's been near the front, and he got a good push from Gabriel Apollo, who's having another good run along with Robert Nelson there. Andy Lambert is running in the top 20 right now. He didn't have to use his Japanese provisional to get into this race, so good for him, and hopefully he can try and gain some points on the top 30 in owner points. Ike Durbin makes it three wide for the lead on Gavin DeGray and Ben Worthington getting a good push from Barry Juveno and a couple other cars back there, Joe Craig, Brian Gallagher, a few others. And looks like Ike Durbin gets shuffled high. Barry Juveno tries to make a move, but Joe Craig pushes him out of the way, and it looks like Joe Craig is going to lead that lap. Yes, Joe Craig did lead that lap getting pushed by Brian Gallagher, Edward Carroll, and a few other cars back there. Tommy Urban having a good run in that number 25. Excellent job for him. A few laps later, here's Clara Kindall, and she's opened up a big gap on the field. Robert Nelson holding off cars in second place, and we've got three and four wide back there. And I think I just saw a cloud of smoke. Yes, I did. Caution one on lap 36. Back in the pack, there's some action between Andy Lambert, Brian Gallagher, and... Dave Hetzel, and they get together, and there's a big wreck there. You see Ian Elias on the bottom, Tommy Urban going for a slide, and a couple other cars pile in there. You see here's another shot. Ian Elias goes for a slide through the infield grass. Claire here tries to avoid, but no, she, she gets collected there. Edward Carroll goes up the track and gets hit, as well as Gaspar Souza. And what is Ramsey Cockiner doing? He just flew in there. Just, he didn't use the brakes at all, and he is done for the day. Here's on board Tommy Urban, who got a good piece of this incident. You see right there, Dave Hetzel, and he gets into Hetzel, and there is Jacob Eichholz escaping on the high side, and a couple other cars, and you just saw Ramsey Cockiner go flying by there at about 250 miles per hour. He'd get out of the car okay, but he still probably should have used the brakes in that situation. Clara Kindle would lead on the restart on lap 40, rather Clara Crashall as she, I don't think she's gone a race without crashing out. 
as she's got Robert Nelson, Lenny Jacobs, and uh, Dan Foray and Chris Benson behind her. Dan Foray having a strong run as well as Robert Nelson, but Lenny Jacobs and Chris Benson have been up near the front all day long. And there's Flint Stoneman back there as well having a strong run. As here we have Chris Benson taking a look on the inside on lap 42, and I think he's going to get uh, past her with no drafting help on the bottom. Excellent job by him. Yes, he does get past her, and Chris Benson takes the lead once again in that 55 car. He has been one of the few rookies that's actually really put forth a really, really good season, and he's come close to a few wins now, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of him as Clara Kindall sweeps down by the bottom. Clara Kindall, another rookie as well. And here we've got an onboard shot of just how close they're racing. As you see there, they are neck and neck as they take the line. I think Clara Kindall led that lap by about two thousandths of a second as she's got more drafting help from Lenny Jacobs and a couple other cars, but Ben Worthington down there providing some support for Chris Benson. No, Chris Benson pulls high, tries to block Clara Kindall, and Kindall sweeps low. We've got an excellent battle up here for the lead. And here we have Chester Benson, who is still running in the lead pack, but um, he's been having a few uh, problems lately, especially with his tires. And here we've got Damon Jones having another good, strong run, and he is still in the top 10 after that wreck. He managed to get by that wreck, and he he's just having an awesome run today. One of the few rookies that are really, really good on super speedways. A few of them are in the back right now, but Damon Jones having an exemplary performance, and I hope that we can see him in the top 30 after this race because he's just been doing awesome all day. At 49, and Chester Benson is reporting more problems on that number 30 Ego as he pulls that car into the pit lane. It appears he's got another left front tire down on that car. I'm not sure why they had so many tire problems this week, but hopefully they'll be able to get that fixed for next week or for the next race. Excuse me. Here is Craig Yonser, and he is running in second place right behind Clara Kindall, and this is his chance to win the race as Chris Benson passes him on the bottom, but uh, Craig Yonser has been up front all race long, as you've seen, and here he's running in the, in the top five, so hopefully he'll be able to pull off a win here for Johnson Racing, and hopefully one of the first wins for the rookies of the year. Here is Tom Delgado, who's managed to work his way back up into the lead pack. As you see Daniel Sharp right behind him, he was off the lead pack as well. But now they're making a run towards the front near the end of this race. It is lap 55 of, six, of 76 right now. And they're slowly working their way towards the front. Hopefully they'll be able to make a charge at the end of the race. Here is John Kirkpatrick going a third lap down. As you see, he's right in front of the damaged car of David Hetzel there. And, uh, well, John Kirkpatrick's been... Uh, too much, not too bad of a back marker except right here where he's blocking Lenny Jacobs but uh, John Kirkpatrick I guess he's realized that he's a, a doomed to be a back marker so he's trying to give way to the lead cars at least now here is Cameron Taylor who got a bit damaged in that wreck and he's going to lap down as well here as we get a nice aerial view of that and see how the pack's all bunched up there and yeah here he is um, and he's been way off the pace ever since getting involved in that accident there as he he's, he's trying to let uh, Preston Bell buy and he holds up Lane Jacobs two really strong cars all week including Ike Durbin there on the bottom so he's gonna let those two buy here's the 55 of Chris Benson leading again coming to lap 62 and he is the highest rookie in the point standings right now he is currently in ninth place Oh, scratch that, he is the second highest rookie. Pete Maverick is in eighth place, but excellent showing for Chris Benson here in the number 55 Stratosphere Tonnerre. And here is, I believe that's Gabriela Apollo leading again. She has been struggling all all year long. She's been nowhere near the front. She's, I believe she's wrecked out of every single race she's run. So uh, hopefully she'll be able to turn that around here today as she gets shuffled to the high side. Joe Craig, who's been strong all day. He works his way back up to the front here with, in the closing laps. And Kelly Blackwater is making an excellent showing here late in the going. She's moved up to third with, I believe that, yes, that's Flint Stoneman there up in second place. Flint Stoneman giving that accurate and excellent run up in the top five. Hopefully he can make a challenge there on Lenny Jacobs, but Jacobs has been pretty much untouchable once he gets to the lead. It takes a pretty big draft pack to actually unseat him from the lead. So I don't know if those cars have the power to unseat him. 
but here here we've got Kelly Blackwater making a charge for the lead. Kelly Blackwater in the number 35 Golden Corral Toyota. If she holds this position, children will eat free tomorrow as a Golden Corral promotion. If Kelly Blackwater does score a top 10, kids eat free the next day. Um, very noble cause there by Golden Corral to do that, and I believe Kelly Blackwater will live up to that sometime during the race. Here is Craig Yonser, and he is taking the lead again away from Preston Bell on the bottom, getting a good shove from Flint Stoneman there on the inside, along with Nicholas Cordovos and Gabriel Apollo as they're coming to lap. I believe, yes, that is Dave Hetzel there on the outside. They're coming to lap Dave Hetzel here on lap 73. Just a few laps to go here in this race. I believe that pit stops may be occurring here in the next, uh, oh, we've got a wreck there in the back. Caution two on lap 73. Damon Jones gets hooked by Clara Kindall as he tries to make a move for the pit lane, but Kindall's not pitting this lap, so she tries to get out. She gets into Stoneman, and Stoneman goes into Jones, and there is also uh, Worthington there. All three of those cars would go out of the race after this. Jones gets hooked. As you see, he just gets flat out dumped. Kindall gets into Stoneman, and Stoneman shoots across the track right in front of Jones, and Jones has no choice but to slam into him and Worthington there. As you see, uh, Stoneman's stricken car sitting in the grass right there. Now, this race would have normally ended under a yellow flag. However, PCC Cup Series officials announced earlier this week that they would be implementing a green-white checkered rule if the race were to receive a yellow flag with under four laps to go. They threw the red flag, and the 31 cars that were still listed as running were allowed to repair their damage and become competitive again. Double wide restart, no cautions, two laps. Sounds like a recipe for mayhem if you ask me. Now let's go back to the track and watch this green-white checkered unfold. Craig Gonser leads the field to the green flag with Gabriel Apollo on his outside as we do a double wide restart here with two laps to go. Craig Gonser leads the field with Lane Jacobs pushing him on the bottom there as the cars fan out three and four wide as they head into turn one. Whoa, what is Lane Jacobs doing? He's looking low. Craig Gonser goes down to block and he gets a wheelie in the grass there as he pulls up on track and no, no, there's Dan Foray and we've got a huge wreck coming out of turn two as Gabriela Apollo takes the lead there on the back stretch and Preston Bell goes into the wall and there's mayhem going on behind as Sam Brown spins. Gabriel Apollo goes to the outside as we've got Nicholas Corridovos on the bottom and Nicholas Corridovos will take the lead heading onto the front straightaway. Could he get his third win of the season? Now we're going to back, go back and see what happened here on the back stretch as you see there that Preston Bell just got dumped into the wall and mayhem ensues as Cameron Taylor comes flying in there and we've got a bunch of other cars. Dan, Dan Sharp is involved, Chris Winter, we're going to go on board here with with uh, Brian Gallagher, as you see, K Clara Kindall there, Tom Delgado, Ryan Jeffries, uh, I believe that's Barton Sandy there also involved as Brian Gallagher tries to drive away. We're gonna go back and focus on the lead group here. Here is Nicholas Cordovas and Gabriel Apollo as we've got smoke in the back there as it looks like Cody Deke and a couple other cars are involved as Gabriel Apollo makes a move to the bottom to take retake the lead. Dan Lecklayer looks like he hooks uh, Cody Deke there and Ike Durbin comes piling in. Ike Durbin hits the rear end of Cody Deke, and Lenny Jacobs has nowhere to go but into him as all three cars are out of the race. No, I believe that Ike Durbin will continue on. And Barry Juvenal comes flying through there. He's got smoke pouring out of his car. Looks like he got involved in a big wreck. And there was another wreck as we took the green flag back here. We're going to take another look at that as it looks like John Jefferson and a couple other cars tangled together in the back. But now back to the lead. Gavriel Apollo driving through the smoke and the dust kicked up from those wrecks as he as uh, she passes Pete Maverick there. It looks like Gavriel Apollo will survive and she will take her first ever PCC Cup Series win at Talladega. As mentioned before, Nicholas Corridovos gets a second place out of that deal. Kelly Blackwater finishes third, gets her first ever podium, and kids will eat free tomorrow. As in Golden Corrals across the nation, kids will be able to eat free. Chris Benson gets an awesome finish in fourth with his teammate Preston Bell right behind him in fifth. Dan Lecklayer, despite hooking Nick, uh, despite hooking Cody Deke coming to the white flag, holds on for sixth. John Jefferson, despite that early spin during the green-white checkered, gets seventh. Daniel Sharp gets an awesome eighth on debut. Ike Durbin soldiers home in that damage car to ninth place and yes, you are reading that correctly. Only nine cars finish this race as Cody Deke 
finishes 10th despite falling out after taking the white flag.